thing about phones is you accept the fact that everybody has one. You accept mm -hmm. the fact you always have it on you. So it might as well be a part of your body. It's just not connected. And one day it will be. One day they're going to figure out how to put a thing on your head that makes your brain work way better. And a few people are going to do it. And they're going to have a big advantage. And then we're all going to do it. But until then. Until then. Your phone will be like your will. When you die, take my phone, son. Everything I have and trust. <laughs> right. Bitcoin. Everything I, everything I right. love. All, all my, my NFTs. All my information. Yeah. All my yeah. love for my life. Everything's in here. You take this. Yeah, it'll people be your will. NFTs on their phone. Yeah, it'll be your will. Your phone will be your will. All your information. To somebody yeah. Your secret. I just think it's all going in that direction. It's all going in like it becomes more and more a part of your life, not less of a part of your life. People say, hey, you should take some time off your phone. Hey, and everybody agrees, but nobody does it. No. And everybody's going in the same general direction, which is more and more immersion. What's the purpose for doing it? What's the purpose for cutting it off? It's going to be a bunch of people printing nonsense and that it wouldn't, wouldn't help anybody. You know, when Edison made the light bulb, right? I forgot the guy. What was the guy? Morgan, Morgan something. Um, J.P. Morgan? Yeah. His father said, you're such a fool. You <laughs> for making a light bulb? For making a light bulb. <laughs> said, you're such a fool. You're just going to ruin your life with gadgets like this? That's hilarious. You're such a fool. His father, his father Jules <laughs> Rose, 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 That's like, how it always happens. Though. I feel like people that... They're always thinking the outside, light bulb of, was outside a, of the box. Was a mistake. Yeah. He said the light bulb was a disaster. Suddenly you're wasting <laughs> time and money on this. But you thing. know what's interesting, Mike? Those old light bulbs lasted forever. Yes. They figured out a way to make light bulbs burn out. That was one of the first products that they made shittier. Like as time went on, instead of saying, oh, I know how to make a light bulb that lasts 100 years. Listen, they knew how to do it. Like what they call D-E-T-E-D. -E -E. Like the shit they were able to do. Well, shit. Mike and I grew up without the internet. That's the difference to you, you youngsters. <laughs> you guys are so accustomed to having the internet, you think it's normal. When I was a kid, you left the house and no one knew where the fuck you were. But listen, you just went out there. There was yeah. no phones. Listen, yeah. No one knew who you were, but look what, look how much you had in your head. You had a lot in your head. Wow, you yeah. had so yeah. many numbers. You were like, a, it was oh, like, yeah. listen, we never went to school, but we're like, we're mathematicians. The numbers that were in yeah. our head. Oh, we want to call mom, we want to call John, we want to call yeah. the prison house, we want to call police station. All that shit is in our head. I always kept a quarter in that little stupid pocket in the Levi's. I uh -huh. always kept a quarter up there just in case yeah. I had to call somebody. Like, and you could get lost and have to call somebody. I feel like you guys read a lot more books, too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of books on, like, Anthony Robbins-type books, like, books on psychology, yeah. books on, like, you know, how to get your mindset right, get your discipline in order. I always, I very, I always yeah. looked up royal families, like, you know what I mean, the Borgias and all those guys, and see how they... Because some of these guys' bloodlines last for, like, a thousand years. Yeah. Didn't you win a Taekwondo uh, tournament? The U.S. That was a Olympic, couple of hundred. Olympic. No, I, I, I was a Massachusetts state champion, and I won a thing called the American Open. I came in second in the U.S. Cup against yeah. a guy who fought in the Olympics. And I I've, I've, I competed in a lot of Taekwondo tournaments. But yeah. then I started kickboxing, and I realized, is, I realized how easy it was for me to get fucked up. Because uh, Taekwondo, they o you only kick. Mm -hmm. You only punch to the body. Mm -hmm. And so, like, my ability to block punches to my face, I was grossly overestimating it. So I started sparring with kickboxers and just getting lit up. So then I started really concentrating on boxing. And I was teaching it at Boston University. I was teaching it. At, I had my own school in yeah. Revere, Massachusetts. And I was like, I got to quit. Because if I don't quit, I'm going to half-ass this. And I don't want to half-ass th for the students. And I don't want to half-ass this comedy thing either. I got to, like, I got to go all in. So yeah. I quit. But listen, life is word. Yeah. Life is word. And you didn't quit. You stopped. Yeah, I just stopped. I realized, right. like, for me to ch keep competing, this was pre-UFC, right? So there was no, like, way to make a living fighting, really. For sure. Like, all of those tournaments were all free. Uh, the kickboxing tournament I fought in was free. And then the uh, if you wanted to go professional as a kickboxer, there wasn't a lot of money in America. You would have to probably yeah. go overseas. Overseas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd have to fight in Europe. you get fighting the Holland guys. Like, all those guys in uh, Holland were... A bunch of bad motherfuckers came out of there. Like, just, ooh, in, in that yeah. Area. yeah. Declan. Ramon you know, Deckers. Ooh, yeah, yes. you know Declan. Yeah. yeah.